try this question on your own before moving on. There are a couple of distances that we can label on the figure, in particular x and y. The question states that x is equal to 1,000 meters, and then it also states that y is equal to 400 meters. So let's add those two labels to the drawing. Now there are two waves being emitted by the different antennas. There's the wave produced by this antenna and then the wave produced by that antenna. In essence, each antenna sends out a wave that reaches the car. We can see from the diagram that the distance that the waves travel is different. This antenna being closer to the car is going to produce a wave that has to travel a shorter distance to get to the car, and this antenna, which is farther from the car, is going to produce a wave that has to travel farther to get to the car. But what is key is not necessarily the distances themselves, but the difference in those distances. And that difference is called the path length. So let's look at that formula. Now they use this Greek letter here to represent that path length. Some books call it a path difference, so that's also something to keep in mind. What we need to do is to set that path difference equal to m times lambda. Now how do we know to do that? Well, it turns out that whenever you're in a situation of what is called constructive interference, then you will be setting that path difference equal to m times the wavelength. Now perhaps you're wondering how do we know this is constructive interference as opposed to destructive interference well, that depends on the language in the question. They mentioned the second maximum, and whenever we hear the word maximum, we can assume safely that that is constructive interference. On the other hand, if it mentioned minimum, of course, that would be destructive. But in this case, we certainly do have constructive interference. Now, D was actually the distance between the two sources of waves, and that was actually given to us in the question. We could have labeled that at the beginning, in fact, but that was equal to 300 meters, so we can include that. So we have D. The M can vary. That can be a number anywhere from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3, basically any positive or even negative integer. In this case, since the question asks for the second maximum, we can safely know that M is going to equal 2. The wavelength is unknown. In fact, that's what part A of this question is asking for, so we're going to have to find that. And then sine of theta is going to come from a little bit of trigonometry. So let's go over to the diagram, and what we want to do is draw a line from the center of the two antennas over to where the car is. Now when we do that, we can see that we formed an angle right here, and what we want to do is come up with the sine of that angle. Now, of course, the sine of any angle will equal the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. If we look at this angle, we have the opposite side labeled as being 400. What we don't have is the hypotenuse, so we're actually going to have to step back and use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of this hypotenuse, and that way we can figure out what the sine of the angle is. So that's our next task, to use the Pythagorean theorem. Now, of course, Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Looking at the triangle that we just formed in the diagram, we would have 1,000 squared plus 400 squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared, or h squared. We can use our calculators to simplify this. And then we can take the square root of both sides so that we isolate h, the hypotenuse. And when you do that, you should get about 1,077 meters. So there is the hypotenuse. We can now figure out what the sine of theta is. So sine of theta is going to equal the opposite side, which is 400 in our triangle, divided by the hypotenuse, which we just found to be 1,077. So this term right here, this sine of theta in the equation, we can substitute in 400 over 1,077 in there. So we now have everything we need to figure out the wavelength. We can plug in all the given and known information into this equation right here. So there we have it. We've plugged in all the known values. Don't forget that m was equal to 2 because we're looking at the second maximum. All we need to do now is just divide both sides of this equation by 2, and that'll help us isolate the wavelength. So here we have it, the wavelength. We can certainly use our calculators to simplify this. And when we do that, we get 55.7 meters equal to the wavelength. And that is indeed the correct answer to part A of the question. Now, I think some students have a hard time with part A because they try to mistakenly use the following equation. This is one that's printed in the textbook. I won't go over how to use this equation in this particular case because, frankly, it would not have worked. We were even given a hint in the question that said, do not use the small angle approximation in this problem. This equation right here, which you'll find in your book, only works if the following condition holds. If the sine of the angle is roughly equal to the tangent of the angle. Now, we found the sine of the angle 
to be 400 over 1077. So the sine of the angle, I'm running out of room here, but that was 400 over 1077. The tangent of the angle, tangent is opposite divided by adjacent. So that would be 400 divided by 1000. 400 divided by 1000. If you simplify these on your calculator, now that transforms into 0.371 roughly equaling 0.400. That might seem pretty close, but in order for the small angle approximation to hold true, the first three digits, the first three decimal places, I should say, the first three decimal places have to match exactly in both numbers, and certainly here they don't. This is 0 0.371, this is 0 0.400. So if the first three decimal places don't match, then essentially you're not allowed to use the small angle approximation, which means you would not be able to use this equation. So we had to solve it a little bit more rigorously, I suppose. We can now move on to part B. Now, part B is asking about a minimum in reception. Now, a minimum, as we mentioned earlier, is an indication of destructive interference. So we can write down the same path difference formula, but this time we're going to be looking at destructive interference. Notice in this case we've used the term m plus 1 half as opposed to just m. Remind yourself that earlier we used m for constructive interference. When it's destructive, we want to use m plus a half. Now, of course, we know the wavelength because we found it previously. m is still going to equal 2, and the reason for that is that it's asking for the next minimum in reception. So the very next minimum would come right after the maximum. Well, the maximum had an m value of 2, and so the very next minimum will also have an m value of 2. The d is still fixed at 300 meters. What we need to figure out is the sine of theta. We're going to isolate that. So let's plug in d, m, and the wavelength. And then after plugging in, we can divide both sides by 300. That's going to help us isolate the sine of theta. And then we can simplify that on our calculator. Now to solve for theta, we can take the inverse sine of both sides. When we take the inverse sine on the left side, the inverse sine and the regular sine, if you will, cancel out to leave just theta. And we just have to make sure we do the inverse sine on the right side. So in essence, theta becomes the inverse sine of that decimal. And when we plug that into our calculators, and come over here, we should get a theta of approximately 27.7 degrees. Now, how is this going to help us? Well, to understand that, let's redraw the scenario. So here's the picture again. In the original picture, the car was located at that second maximum, so we've labeled max right here. It's now moving a little bit forward to reach the next minimum. Now, we just found the angle to that next minimum as 27.7 degrees. We know that this distance right here is fixed as 1,000 meters, as stated in the question. What we want to do is figure out this question mark distance here. That's going to give us the distance up to that second minimum. Now, if you look at that blue triangle carefully, you can see it involves the tangent. We have the tangent of the angle 27.7 degrees is equal to the, the side opposite to the 27.7 degrees in the blue triangle, which is this unknown side, so we can just call that y, perhaps. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. Adjacent would be the 1,000 meter side right here on the blue triangle, so that's 1,000. Now, if you multiply both sides of this equation by 1,000, you're going to be able to solve for this y, this distance right here, the one that we had marked with a question mark. So you get 1,000 times tangent of 27.7, which on a calculator simplifies to approximately 524 meters. So that distance that we marked y right here is 524 meters. So think about how much farther the car has to drive to get to that minimum. Remember, it was right here originally at 400 meters. Now it needs to drive up to 524 meters. So the distance, the additional distance it has to go is simply 524 minus uh, 400. So 524 minus 400 is equal to 124 meters. So that's going to be the additional distance the car has to drive from here at the 400 meter mark up to that next minimum at the 525 meter mark. That distance right there is the 124 meters. Thanks very much for taking the time to watch this. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. And if you like the video, please subscribe. And also, you're welcome to send your own question to the email address listed on the screen right here.